Hey there, Beard of Whiskey crew. I'm Russ Heaps, and today this episode of Beard of Whiskey is uh, taking place in Traveler's Rest, South Carolina. It's uh, kind of a smallish town that's between Greenville, South Carolina, and the North Carolina border. And uh, we're here, and we're going to learn a little bit about the brewery. We're going to learn a bit about the, uh, the folks that make the beer here, and uh, we're going to talk a little bit about the beer. And uh, I would like to introduce here to my left my uh, beer drinking co-conspirator. This is Drew Wortham. And uh, he sits in on some of these and, and participates in some of the things that we do. Uh, next to him, we have Ben Pearson, and he's a brewmaster. He's been brewing for years and years. We'll get into a little bit of that, but he is, uh, he's a brewer here. And on the uh, far end opposite me, uh, we've got Andrew Myers, and uh, he's sort of the head brewer here. And guys, uh, want to thank you for the invite. Happy to be here. Took a little, uh, a little doing to get us up and running here today, but they were patient, and heck, we got to drink an extra beer, so what's wrong with that? Uh, having said all of that, guys, um, tell me a little bit about the background of, uh, this is, uh, the brewery's called Swamp Rabbit Brewery, uh, and there's a little bit of a story there, I'm sure, and guys, what, how did the name come about? Uh, the Swamp Rabbit Trail's right across the street, so the name seemed Appropriate, I guess. Great story. It was pretty easy. Yeah. Yeah. Great story. Wow, that, yeah, okay. So, cut. <laughs> That's right. Great job all around, guys. <laughs> um, Swamp Rabbit Trail is actually a uh, sort of a hiking, biking trail that is, I don't know, 30 miles long or something uh, in, in, in that area, and it runs from I think uh, here, Traveler's Rest all the way down through Greenville to maybe even the zoo downtown. It runs into downtown Greenville. So it's kind of a big deal uh, here, but this is sort of, is this still sort of the beginning of it, considered the, the trailhead for it? Hmm, that's a good question. Um, I think so. Ooh, I mean, the beginning was downtown. It's a little bit further past, but this was, yeah, this was kind of the end, or the beginning, whichever way you look at it. But, uh, I like yeah, way of thinking. <laughs> well, it was a bloodline to the town. I mean, they were there wasn't a whole lot going on in TR, you know, ten years ago. Uh, so it's definitely been a bloodline. So how long has the brewery been here? We just celebrated our fifth anniversary uh, two weeks ago, actually. Wow. And was there a particular reason why? Because I know when you get five years ago when you guys opened here, there was not. Uh, People would say Traveler's Rest, and you go where or what or why would you what? Why was it that, that you guys decided to locate here? That's all done. Man. Well, it's affordable, and uh, it didn't come with a price tag at downtown Greenville. And uh, number one rule is be able to pay the, the rent. So, and it's but it's so it, my all my daughters went to high school here, so I've known this town for a long time, and this building in particular for a lot of years. It's a great building. What was it before you guys got it? It was a coffee roasting leopard forest coffee roasters, and before that it was a post office. It was, I think, the second post office of Traveler's Rest. So. I have a, yeah, I had this story. I had this woman come in, and she said she had been in TR since she grew up here uh, probably 30 years, 40 years ago. And she said that she would come to this post office and drop off letters that she was writing to her husband in Vietnam at the time. And so this is the first time she'd been back and just said, uh, we, we actually do have a picture on the wall of the post office. Oh. Yeah, 20, 30 years ago. So. A lot of history. You guys have uh, about five years under your belts. What, what kind of production are you doing here? What are you doing annually? What you're producing about five or six hundred barrels a year? Five and six. We, I think this year we're on pace to do a little under five, but we have uh, exceeded that earlier. But five is a good number for us. We're very small. Do you have hopes and dreams of, of being bigger, or are you have satisfied with with the size? I've been bigger, and Andrew's worked bigger, and uh, I think, uh, just speaking for myself. Uh, We've got it pretty easy relative to <laughs> packaging and distribution and multiple employees. I mean, Andrew and I are like the two-headed brewer. You know, yeah. So. yeah. Is it just you two guys? Yeah. Oh, shit. And then my wife, his daughter, is general manager 
and his wife does all the books and keeping and stuff like that. So it's very really technical keeping the family. Yeah, I think we only have like what three or four other bartenders other than that. So. Yeah, we still got some of the originals. So. Yeah. yeah. Wow. So you're you're married to Ben's daughter. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. We. Uh, so he had to kind of he had to kind of take you in. Right? Yeah, it was, <laughs> uh, yeah, it was. Yeah, it was kind of inevitable. I think, but uh, no. Yeah, I was. I used to come. I hadn't been here the whole five years. They hired me about a year after they opened from Thomas Creek, actually. But I started dating Caitlin probably six months after you guys opened. I was just hanging out here so much. I think it was just kind of like, you know what, let's just get a job. So. And, and Ben, you were okay? It was like, yeah, it's okay for my daughter to date this bar fly? Is that the, is that the way? Well, he, was, uh, he had a home brew store when I met him. Uh, and okay. uh, we kind of, I stopped by to buy some little, little things. And, I uh, got to meet him and uh, we got along and yeah, we were friends for months before. Um, I so uh, it was a no-brainer for me. Yeah, uh, you know, in my past, I had a homebrew store too way back, but uh, so it's a it's a way to become really good at cataloging raw materials and flavors. I know Ben, you you said that you've been brewing for thirty years. Uh, how did you kind of get started down that road? My wife decided I needed a hobby. So I was a school teacher and a landscaper, and uh, she thought I needed to do something with my spare time. Well, now that I don't have any spare time, I think she kind of regrets it. But on the other hand, I'm out of the house, so maybe, you know, but that, that's pretty much it, you know. Well, what, what uh, motivated you or inspired you to start a brewery, uh, this brewery? Well, I thought I was the greatest brewer on the face of the earth Is that yet to before be I had the brewery, right? <laughs> Being a home brewer, I think everybody shares that belief. And uh, I started taking training and I realized really quickly that I didn't know diddly about brewing. And uh, I proceeded to get training from people, um, breweries that I enjoyed the beer from. And I've had some great trainers, and I think uh, it makes all the difference. I think coming from a home brew background to uh, trying to hold down a brewery is a quantum leap, sure, at best. And uh, but I had good trainers, and so go through some of them. I mean, it's pretty impressive. Alan Pugsley, who probably don't know or maybe do, was from Shipyard at the time. He was from Geary's in Portland, Maine, and. Carl Strauss, who was uh, wow. the VP of production for Pass Blue Ribbon for 35 years. He taught me how to formulate beer. Dan Carey, who owns New Glarus, was my first uh, trainer. He told me how to hold on to the side of the mountain without falling off. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Dan is uh, probably the best brewer in this country, uh, without a doubt, and, uh, and others. So I got to train in Germany. So. I've had a, you know, eight or nine really thoughtful, great brewers keep me on the road. Wow. Um, so when you say master brewer, you're not. That's not just a. That's not just something you put on a business card. Right. <laughs> well, I th well, I think you do, but I think to be a master brewer, you have to know how to do everything from an empty building to how it runs to what you need, where it's at. You gotta know how to formulate it. You have to know how to be the brewer and the cellar man and all. You know, in my career, I started out, I was the brewer and the brewmaster and the cellar rat. Uh, for years and years, I just did it all myself. And, right. Uh, the, you know, the bigger you get, the more uh, difficult the beers become if you, if you like to do lager beers and you know, it gets, you need somebody to help. I think Andrew started as a cellar rat, and the next thing you knew, he was on the platform and <laughs> making the beer, you know. And uh, but he's worked with me now for three years. I don't worry about him. But, you know, I know he's he's there, and I uh, stay out of his way. And I always joke that I've been demoted now. My vision is really bad, and so I can't get up and read, you know, thermometers and things that are crucial. And so uh, I've learned to, to trust. 
but Andrew is <laughs> an ultimately trustworthy brewer. He's as good a brewer as, as I am. So you're enjoying your devotion then? <laughs> well, uh, I wouldn't go that far. So you, uh, Andrew, you were saying that when you first started coming in here, you ran a home brew store? Yeah, so a little bit before that, so I grew up in Spartanburg, and in 1999, my mom, kind of similar to his situation, my mom got my dad a homebrew kit, and he started brewing in 2000, so I was about 10, 11 years old. Um, so, I mean, I would come downstairs Saturday morning, instead of watching cartoons, stirring and putting hops in the bottle and stuff like that. So I've always been around craft beer. Uh, when I went to college, I had the reputation of just a guy that drank craft beer. Um, I got back from college and I started homebrewing. I used his equipment to start homebrewing. And at the time when I was growing up, R.J. Rockers was a brew pub. Uh, they had where Delaney's is now. They had probably a 15 barrel system, maybe 10 barrel system. And so my dad would go there, and obviously I wasn't old enough to drink. But we'd go there and have a family dinner, and he'd get a couple of beers. And then after I graduated from college, uh, Mark Johnson had opened up his bigger spot downtown in an old, uh, I think it was a Buick dealership or something. But just tons of empty space, great location. And the laws had just changed to where you could take a tour at a brewery in South Carolina and get flights to go along with it. Uh, before then, you really couldn't drink it. Right. Right. Uh, so that was, uh, that just happened, and my family and I started going there, and we started doing the tour. You know, we started just hanging out and got to know Mark really well, and basically just asked him what it would take to get a job there. And he said, you know, we need a tour guide. We need somebody to run this every yeah. Thursday night. So I did that, and I met a guy who was a lawyer in Greenville at the time who had a house, and he wanted to open up a homebrew shop and part of the house because he was an avid homebrewer. And, he was using part of the house, so he would keep the law offices a part of it, and then I would run the homebrew shop, and we had a growler filling station, and cans and bottles, and it was called the Greenville Hop House. So I ran that for about a year, and Tom Davis called me one, one day from Thomas Creek, and said that he needed a new person to run the homebrew shop, and was wondering if we wanted to sell out, you know, and, and, and just kind of merge, and we did. So I worked for him for about a year, and. Uh, ben hired me from there. So. Humble beginnings, and uh, I, I, a lot of people are coming on from a homebrew background now with no experience, and so it's a risky proposition, and you have to make that quantum leap. And if you don't have somebody to lay down good protocol, uh, make sure you know what to do and when to do it, no, it's risky, really risky. And it's yep. a lot of money. <laughs> you know? Yeah, I can imagine. I can imagine. It doesn't seem like a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's tinfoil back there. Yeah, that's uh, very well shaped. <laughs> so, well, for example, you know, look, I've got 30 years in, and I always wanted my own brewery or brew pub, and I thought, you know, this is it for me. So I started working for everybody else. Well. I've, I've worked through 17 different outfits, startups, consulting, on and on. And I always, you know, before, while I worked at my first place, which was Hops Grill and Bar a long time ago, 88. Uh, that was when I was born. <laughs> I wasn't born yet. Yeah. That was <laughs> yeah, I'm old now. But I always wanted to, to have my own. Well, 24 years later, 17 different outfits, um, I finally got enough money to convince the bank to <laughs> loan us some money. And it's a substantial sum of money. So, sure. you know, if you have an angel in your background, it's great because, you know, it's pretty easy, but to get money out of the bank, that's not so easy. Yeah. yeah. They want more than the scales off your back, <laughs> so to speak. Well, you're, you're, you kind of, <laughs> you're, you, you've uh, kind of s slowed down a little bit in terms of, of the hands-on brewing part of it. Uh, are you still putting in a lot of hours here? I'm here every day. He cleans the toilets every day. Yeah, we both do. We, we clean the house, <laughs> mop, sweep, do the toilets, make sure that everything is ready right. to open. And the brewery, and so yeah, I, I wouldn't. I don't think I characterize it as slowing down because 
But once you arrive here, you probably are putting in a couple, three miles of walking back and forth and doing things. So, <laughs> yeah, right. You know, somebody's got to keep things orderly and, you know, the brewmaster's job is to make sure everything is available when you're supposed to do it. Scheduling, raw materials all have to be ready to go. So if I pull out of an operation, you know, a protocol, and, and sit down, I have to sit down and do some paperwork. Yeah. You got to order, you got to make sure what you have on hand. I mean, it's just never ending. It really never ends. There's no beginning or end in this brewery. <laughs> You're just in process all the time. Yeah. Right? And yes, we, we, all have that, we all have that in common. Yeah. Every brewer knows what I'm talking about. It's, you leave one area for five seconds and walk somewhere and you see two other things that need your attention. So if you like that, which I do, I'm addicted to it now. I think I really am a workaholic and uh, Andrew is also. 30 years old, I've had like 19 different jobs. I think this is probably the last one. I think I'm gonna stick this. Fing fingers crossed. <clears throat> fingers crossed. Do you guys uh, do you guys do anything with any of the other breweries in the area? I know that you're kind of far removed from from the ones that are in Greenville, but still you've got you know the, the Thomas Creek connection and some other things. You ever do anything with? Uh, I think what you're hinting at is like more the collaboration. Collaboration. Side, which, you know, we, we don't typically do so much of that just because we don't really have the tank storage here. And then if we were to brew somewhere else, it's not really legal to bring it back here and sell it. So there's some hiccups in that kind of transition there. But as far as doing community stuff, uh, I'm, he's been on the board of the South Carolina Brewers Guild and I'm currently the vice president. And so I, we constantly go to other breweries, you know, check in, hey, how's things going? You need any help? You need any advice? I mean, here's what's going on with the guild. I mean, everything to anything, just kind of making ourselves available, I think is, uh, I don't know, I think it's pretty important. You guys don't have a kitchen? Do you do food trucks at all? What do you, is that what you guys do? Yeah, we have a pretty good catalog of food trucks. Um, being a TR, some of them in Greenville, don't want to drive out here so often, so we might make a special event about it. You know, maybe they'll come out for like once a month or something like that, and they bring in tons of people. One of our most popular ones is from Charlotte. They do a, it's a lobster Maine. They fly fresh lobster in from Maine. They were on Shark Tank and all this stuff. I've, I've heard about this. So we, yeah, we, we've had, they called us, and we've had them out three or like two or three times, and we have them out actually next Wednesday, I believe. And I mean, we'll, we'll, have, we'll have thousands of people. Well, you know, they, the, the friends that are regulars here that you and I talked about mm -hmm. a little bit when we, when we met, they, uh, I know they were here for it in the last month or two, uh, mm -hmm. and she stood in line for 45 minutes. Oh, yeah. To, oh, that was a minimum. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think people were out there. He got a roll of 45 minutes. <laughs> I think that, was was a a bitch. Bitch. that was the start time, I think. I think there were people out there for... Almost four hours. Oh, yeah. Oh. No. Well, see, when they came the first visit, they told us, you're going to be on a two hour wait, can you handle it? And we're like, yeah, we're pretty sure we can handle it. Well, and within 30 minutes, they changed their tune. They're like, we're on a four hour wait. <laughs> and that went on for 10 hours. They served people well after dark, well after they said they were going to leave. A thousand covers. How did they have that much stuff with them? They only like ran out of one food item. They have like five refrigerators or something. Wow. No. You want to talk about professional food? That's that's there desert, there. man. That's there isn't anybody. That How did you stuff all those people in here? Well, I know you've got you've got a, a yeah, fair so size area. Yeah, we close off a lot, so there's no parking back. But that's all the stand on days like that. And the line, the line went and zigzagged in the parking lot twice, and then shot all the way up the driveway here, and was all the way up in front of the in front of the front doors. Wow. And around the building later, and, and uh, you know, <laughs> that bad. night, I was a thousand people. Coming next Wednesday, but I think <laughs> I might just skip that. I think we got eight thousand people hit the page and say they were coming. Yeah. And most people don't want to wait four hours in line. The line stretched down the block. Holy cow! You so, doubled you doubled the population of this town. Oh yeah, oh, and everybody was slammed because yeah. a lot of people showed up. I don't want to wait in this line. So right. they go next door. They go down the street. Yeah. I mean, everybody in the town was. 
They should start paying you guys residuals. <laughs> well, they, they repay us. Yeah, yeah. We bring Anyhow, we, I think we served like what three or four barrels of beer that day. So. Wow, that's yeah. awesome. So that's killer, man. So yeah, that those do help us out a lot. But we do have a lot of great local restaurants, and we always encourage our customers and hey, go down the street, get a pizza, get some barbecue, bring it back. You get a place right next yeah. door. You get a restaurant right next door. Go get some wings. Go get a burger. Bring it back. We don't mind. You ever bring up, you know, we've had people bring picnic basket yeah. and oh, take yeah. over a table and, and have fun, you know, it's just whatever they want to do is fine with us. I've been in food most of my career on the periphery, it's always been a brew pub, mostly, yeah. and, uh, and I don't want anything to do with it. <laughs> <laughs> I, like I like to eat it. That's so if his next question was going to be, are you planning on doing it? <laughs> <laughs> so the answer is hell no. Scratch, 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 scratch. Yeah, I beer, ask. we can control beer pretty well. Once yeah. you bring in a kitchen, that's another animal. Yep. You know, we're not chefs. Uh, I don't know. It's just, yeah. Well, it's a whole other set of, of issues that, rules, that can go wrong. And, oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. I mean, you got a yep. 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 walking in here a couple of months now. And, yeah. So, not for sure. There's pluses and minuses to it. But we, I mean, we do... Uh, had a pretty good little thing going on here. So. Um, Andrew, if you want to jump up and grab yourself another beer. Oh, oh I'm been... so glad you said that. I was really Yeah, go while you're up. <laughs> <laughs> you would want to introduce us. Yeah, we have good time to introduce yeah, we, and you want to talk about the My Bach? Wow. Yeah, let's talk a little bit. Whatever you're drinking. Let, let's talk a little bit about this. It's, it's, uh, it was very good. We're most, uh, we're not the typical brew pub, and I know a lot of brew pubs now are doing lager beers, but that's how I am. I am classically trained in lager uh, beer, and so we like to do as many as we can. Now we're very small, but uh, well, lagers lagers take longer. Don't they? they do. Yeah. yeah, of course. Yeah, that's a that's a longer process than that. I I don't think that there's a beer out there. There there may be some exceptions, maybe like the Belgian style wit that's generally fast, but. Other than that, the longer you can age a beer after you. You know, fermented it out, better it's going to be. It's just, it's that simple. But if you can't, if you don't have the luxury of time, then you got to bring the beers out maybe before you'd like. And they will evolve depending, of course, if, if you filter, you, know, you pretty much have, uh, the evolution of the flavor of that beer is only going downhill. But if you, right. like we do, we don't filter. And so once we, uh, start serving the beer. It's kept cold, kept under CO2. It's clean, pretty clean. And for over time, I mean, we, we, we get to watch. I didn't, I didn't realize you guys didn't filter. That's yeah. Well, and that's not easy to do either. But you know, we no. we have uh, techniques, and and we have time. I mean, we, uh, when I designed this brewery, I wanted to make lager beers, and so we, I designed it with that in mind. And we do a lot of ales. Don't get me wrong. We're very proud of the lagers, and we usually have one or two. This is on this is delicious. Time. It's fantastic. That yeah. is really good. So this it's one got silver, yeah, so yeah. silver metal, metal uh, 2016 GBF Bach beer. Yeah, and that's a dual category. They they do Oktoberfest, box and my box, double box, like all of that. All the box. So if you go out to Denver. It, and and they called off the Swamp Rabbit. It was towards the end of the night. <laughs> Swamp Rabbit Brewery from Travelers Red, South Carolina, Silver. Everybody in the crowd is going, what? South Carolina? <laughs> Travelers Red. <laughs> <laughs> Travelers <laughs> Red. <laughs> you know, Googling it. What the <laughs> hell is this? Well, look, it was, it, it was a great feeling. And, and you, you guys were there for that? Yeah. That's, we like that's really cool, man. I've been out that there is, eight cool. times, and this will be our ninth. And I've got a couple, you know, a bronze and a silver. So. Yeah. That's a good it's, feeling. It's, it's actually amazing this year. So yeah, yeah. Yeah. we judged, uh, uh, what, two years ago you judged. We didn't go last, we sent beer last year, but then he's going to be judging again this year. So, so you'll have at least one vote for you. Right? <laughs> 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 yeah, the judges, uh, if they enter, can't, can't be judging the categories that they're judging. Yeah, but that ruins my job. <laughs> 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 well, we'd be happy to do that. But uh, for a little brewery like this, 500, 
barrels a year to go up against, yeah. you know, somebody like Firestone Walker, or yeah, any, you know, founders or somebody like that. Especially you can see different. any kind of an award that they yeah. may have been in and nobody knows because they don't tell you, but it's a great feeling to go up against oh, yeah. the best. Yeah, the I best. can only imagine. Yeah. Some of these breweries I think they're shoe in and then suddenly this travels right south yeah, Carolina that's brewery and comes out and stars it. Yeah. Six hundred so barrel a year up start. <laughs> but everything all in one room. Yeah. Yeah. That's it's incredible. And this beer goes back a long ways. You started designing this beer probably twenty years ago when you were in Greenville, right? At Reedy River? Yeah. Well in downtown brewing company, yeah, sure. Ninety five. Yeah. That's my problem is I go back so far I can't remember. <laughs> But I, thankfully, somebody's here to remind me. <laughs> that's right. You know, that's right really, on. we like to make great beer. Of course, we like to drink great beer. Well, I can, I can see that by the way Andrew's uh, pounding those. Oh, 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 <laughs> my drinking. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought you were talking about my weight. But yeah. Well, that's one plays into the other. Yeah. 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 Well, you know, when you're in the beer business, the, the old Milwaukee tumor begins to show up. You know? <laughs> yeah. It grows. The Milwaukee <laughs> tumor. I've never heard that before. That's uh, a great. That's a. That's great, fantastic. That is. I think I heard that from Carl Strauss actually. See, wow. see here, you pick up a little something. A little Milwaukee a little something tumor. Different. That's right. Um, so, how many typically? Uh, how many beers do you have on tap at any one time? Uh, you, actually, lately we've had eight. Um, usually we have six or seven, but eight is pretty much our max, and we have a. We, like you said, we usually have a very wide range of beers. Uh, four of the beers that usually stay on are the IPA, the American Pale Ale, the White Ale, and then our Mars beer, which is an Oktoberfest style beer. Sometimes we just change the name of it just to kind of, right. uh, you know, fool the customer. <laughs> it goes from Mars to October. Right. Right. But it is the and same it, beer. It is funny because they'll, they'll be, where's the Mars Where's the Mars Where's the Oktoberfest? <laughs> <laughs> just the Try the Oktoberfest. Yeah. It's comparable. Okay. Yeah. So, but we um, it's got a huge catalog, and then we do, I guess about twice a year, we usually come up with a new recipe. Um, we pen and paper, and get it down, and do the math, and make sure the color is right, the ABV is right, the hop ratio right. So. Other other than your uh, October Oktoberfest, yeah. um, do you have a do you have seasonals that are regular seasonals that, that you guys do? Yeah, the year? raspberry white ale is for sure one of the most popular beers we do. It brings everybody up in the works. Um, I mean, it's just ruby red. We use 300 pounds of Chilean raspberries. It's, it's just fantastic. It's spritzy. It's tart. It's not sour. Um, it's a little sweet. And the guys like it just as much as the girls do. We have a hashtag that says, real men drink pink beer. <laughs> so, it is, uh, yeah, that's one of our seasonals that people really... Is that your summer to. beer? Uh, we try to do it almost a quarter, actually. Oh, really? Yeah, if we can. I mean, yep. it, it's a little hard for us to it when it runs out. I can't <laughs> yeah. Keep making it that way, we don't have to care about it. That's right, right. exactly. It's, it's, it's nice to have a beer that's like that, though. Yeah, oh, absolutely. It would be nice if all of them that way. <laughs> we lost the white, we ran out of the white ale for two hours Sunday afternoon. I'm not ready to Shit, when I walk in the door. <laughs> Andrew, where's the white ale? Andrew, where's the white ale? You know, part of the, the brew pub and the brewery business is you never want to run out of your customer's favorite beer. You don't want to be known as right. a place that's always out of your favorite beer, right. one that they like. So that's why we have regulars, and then, you know, well, if you run out yeah. of the four specials, then sorry. Yeah. yeah. It was on the page. You, you knew it was here, so. Yeah. This is this is a white ale here. You still have not finished that. No. Beer. Well, I've been drinking. I've been drinking this. Uh, Just this, poured it. This was our this was our welcome beer. When uh, a lot of times we'll we'll have a welcome beer before we actually get started, and that's that's what we had. They just, Social lubricant. Yes, they just. Uh, I'm well, speak a foreign language. Uh, yeah, and I'm almost ready to dance. I might even dance. Please that don't. can happen. Yeah, please don't. Um, but this is the white ale is is really good. It's that's good. got chamomile. Coriander, and we've been using tangent. That's why I felt so relaxed after drinking it. That's right. That's right. I felt like I had just taken a bath. That's right. Very herbal. Yeah. It's very easy drinking. I like it. It is. Very crushable. This, yeah, this is a good. This is a great summer beer. And that that's going to be the base for our raspberry beer. So we do that, and we add three hundred pounds of raspberries. Okay. Two beers, everyone sings. That's right. 
I've already had two. Uh oh. I haven't started singing yet. You guys know good. But now you got the bug in my ear. You guys like Tina Turner? <laughs> <laughs> Only with Ike. If you can do Roll Down the River or what? whatever. Really? Yeah, that's the song I was talking about. <laughs> you went the wrong way with that. <laughs> <laughs> One of us had to. Andrew, what was the first craft beer you ever drank? Oh, wow. I think it was Hazelnut Brown Nectar from Rogue. That was one of the first ones I had. Of course, the first beer I had was my dad's craft beer. I was, I was um, <clears throat> 21, of course. And uh, I'm surprised. Maybe fudge the paperwork a little bit. I was still in college. Uh, and uh, no, I, I would come home for a weekend and wash clothes and take back a six. To be honest with you, I'm surprised that, uh, or it, it maybe you, you colored the story a little bit to not divulge this, but uh, I was surprised with having uh, a, cr a home brewing background to some degree that you weren't the most popular guy in college because you were brewing <laughs> beer in your dorm room. Yeah, I actually didn't. I probably should have, but uh, my dad was still using the equipment and I was happy just going to the store and getting a six pack of Sierra Nevada or Sam Adams or something at the time. Of course, in Clinton, that was about all you could get. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, look, it might you know, still be all you can get. <laughs> if you've got a beard and you're 13 years old, you're not <laughs> yeah. everybody's favorite guy in high school. Right? Yeah, I have many stories about uh, Yeah. I know it's only 13, but he's got a beard. Give him a buy some beer. <laughs> ben, what, what was your introduction to craft beer? And I know because I think we, we're, we're in the same age range. I know there wasn't much. You know, when I was in high school, I'd, I drank Heilman's and Old Style because I grew up in Gary, close to Chicago. And right. uh, those were you know, 25 cents a beer, three shifts of uh, people vomiting. Did they taste like they were worth 25 cents a beer? <laughs> <laughs> but they I actually think, tasted like you know, look, I think when I was in college, I started drinking the Heineken, and I think all my buddies drank it. I think we filled up a two-car garage with empty <laughs> bottles. <laughs> and, and you know, look, and Harp, I think that's when I really started to like beer and appreciate that, uh, you know, European beers just had this something way over what was being done. Look, PBR is a great beer, so, uh, but, you know, I mean, there is another level here, so. <laughs> I started touring California in 85, 86, and I know I drank, like, cable car lager. It was the first commercial home brewery at the time. Mm -hmm. And then Acme and... Steam. You know, yeah, oh, Acre Steam. Steam. And, oh, wow. And, and you yeah. know, Mendocino Brewing Company. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I drank their beer when they had Jack McAuliffe's uh, who started the first microbrewery in the country, Jack McAuliffe, and uh, he sold his equipment to, their, it, to the Mendocino brothers. And so uh, to be back that far when they're hand bottling, Mendocino was hand bottling a liter and a half bottles. <laughs> yeah. That's a 50 pound six pack. Wow. <laughs> that, that's, that's a hell of a way to go. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, you know, and then I started to really appreciate, it was all out in California, of course, most everything spreads this way. The first thing that I ever drank that made me go, wow, there's something other than, than uh, Miller and... Uh, <laughs> That's something that just gets you drunk after a Right. right. <laughs> was uh, Dinkle Lacquer Dark. Wonderful beer. Yeah, and it and I, yeah, okay, good. Yeah, it's a German. It's a German. It's a German beer, and I stumbled across it. Uh, it was in the seventies, and I was working in. I was living and working in New Orleans, and uh, there's an area of New Orleans called Fat City, and uh, there was a restaurant there. And for some random reason, they had Dinkle After Dark, and that was the first taste. And it was like, wow, this is pretty good. And then I found Samuel Smith's Oatmeal Stout. Yeah, yeah. And great I went, beer. oh, yeah, this is. What great beers for spicy food. Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it was like, wow, this is, uh, you know, there's, there, there's other things. There's other things out there. Yeah. And that's kind of what you know, pointed me off in that, in, in the direction of craft beer and starting to look for craft beer. But 
Ankerstein may have been the first uh, craft beer, American craft beer, that I ever had, I think, um, because it, it almost immediately, bang, it was available all over the U.S. Yeah, distribution back then was totally different than now. Yeah. You could get Anchor Steam pretty much across the country. Yeah. Now, and back then, nobody else was doing it. Now, everybody's doing it. And I remember, I remember when Coors broke the line. Yeah. Was you could only get it west of the Mississippi, and I can remember going. Uh, I had family in New Mexico, and at one point, I owned a. Uh, Triumph TR6. Oh, cool. <laughs> so I had to put a, a luggage rack on the back of it <laughs> so I could put a cooler because you couldn't let the beer get warm, of course. Uh, oh, so you'd, yeah. you'd full of, you know, stick a couple of cases in there, stick it full of ice, and I'd tie it onto the onto the trunk, onto this couple luggage rack in the back of my TR6 and, you know, haul it back to Kentucky where I was living. And at that point, you know, I'm not nearly as fond of sports as I was back, you know, back when you couldn't get it. Is there something that, that you've got in the back of your mind that you would like to make that you have yet to make? Or that, that you guys have been talking about going, you know, maybe we should give that a shot? Aphrodisiac beer. <laughs> I'm, I'm all for it. it. I'm all for it. Of course, it's, it's been helping ugly people get happy for thousands of years, but... Yeah, if you drink too much of the aphrodisiac beer, it actually has the opposite. Yeah, once, you, once you've got a beer in each hand, <laughs> watch out. We always joke about making like a session imperial double blonde <laughs> stout rice. You know, it's just like, like make it as long of a work. <laughs> it takes up two yeah. spaces. Uh, and, and things really have changed. I mean, the home brewers today, you know, are just pushing it in every direction, yeah, yeah. you know. If we don't really like to do that, per se. I mean, we are more, a little more classically oriented. If we make an American Pale Ale, it probably should taste like Sierra Nevadas, because they are the Ur type. Yeah. And, uh, and, and uh, maybe that sets us apart, because we're older school. We, we do some things, like the raspberry beer, that are unusual. But other than that, if we pick a style, I mean, I guess it comes from competing at the Great American Beer Festival or the World Beer Cup that they lay out guidelines and then you, then you, you don't, I, you know, we don't want to brew a beer based on their guidelines, but if you're going to enter a competition, it's nice that you can do that. Right, that you and know what the guidelines out, are. You find out that you can be, you know, more academic about what you're doing. Not that we're not academic in here with this beer, but... I don't know if I'm explaining this quite right. <laughs> we make, it's not, I hate to say it's simple beer, but like our Pilsner, it's one of my favorite beers that we make. As far as the recipe goes, it's one of the least complicated recipes, but it's one of the most complicated beers sure. to brew. Yeah. Uh, just procedure-wise, protocol-wise, temperature, making sure everything, you can't hide anything with Pilsner. There really is a brilliance in like perfecting simplicity. Yeah, Going back to the exactly. Brewery. Exactly, perfecting simplicity. I think is a great way to put it. Yeah, that's that's awesome. Right, it's a little bit of less is more. Yeah. And if you can keep everything clean, it becomes very interesting, and, and you're aware of that while you're drinking it. Whereas I can drink some beers that just have, you know, it's like drinking a landslide. Right, they're just being inundated with everything. There's it's so much going on, on, you can't yeah. actually pick anything out. Our yeah. ears are very much uh, like what he's talking about, they mark. Your first impression of the beer should be good. But you smell it, you taste it, and you go, wow, wow, what is that? And you get this nice maltiness in this beer, especially sweetness, and then it just slowly dots off, and you just go, wow, I'm take another sip of that. You know, there's really something to be said about that style. Absolutely, that's, that's tough. To, that's, that's, not, yeah, that's his experience coming in. That's, yeah, that's, that's that's almost not what people are doing. People right. are trying to overcomplicate your palate and really get. Yeah, absolutely. You no, know, I, I feel really overwhelmed cool. sometimes with stuff yeah. as a beer. One, it's like for years and years and years. It's like, what is he trying to do? Make the cleanest beer possible. Make the clearest beer possible. Mm -hmm. Make something that isn't skunky. <laughs> What's popular now? <laughs> New England IPAs and. 
and dank yeah. beers that taste yeah. like weed, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's exactly what I'm saying. Yeah. <laughs> and then, and, 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 and you know, funky beers and wild house ale. Yeah, and gozos, like all that kind of stuff. So, yeah. So, there's room for everybody. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Being in TR, we do get a lot of people that come out. Hey, what's the closest thing I got to Budweiser? Yeah. All right, well, let's, that's let's, the start. Let's go. That's yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. exactly. Yeah. So, okay, that's what you like. We can let's let's try a couple of beers here. Yeah. Usually, they're underage drinkers. <laughs> they come in asking for Bud Light. Yeah, we get you right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Freshly twenty-one. Wonder why you guys can't serve on Long Island iced tea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, you guys, you guys are a little cramped for space here. Do you ever do any barrel aging? No, and that's partly why. A lot, and uh, we've got stainless. Uh, it comes and goes pretty quickly, <laughs> and uh, in barrels, I don't know much about it other than I've done cast, you know, I've yeah, never done, right. how do you clean them, how do you keep them in shape, and all that yeah. stuff. We're not big on that. Anything else on your mind? No, I think we've pretty much covered it. <laughs> we've, it's a pretty short race to get to the end of my life. <laughs> we've covered some serious ground here. Uh, yeah, absolutely. And uh, so with that, uh, guys, again, I appreciate hosting us and, and letting us come in and, and uh, tear up your, your place to set this up and hanging in here. This is, this is a Monday. They're actually closed on Monday, although I'm sure they're both here working on Mondays, but uh, we've kind of interrupted their, their Monday work schedule a little bit. But uh, we'll be sitting down having a beer anyway. So. Well, they <laughs> do it on camera. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> might as well, you know, might as well. Uh, now our lives, now our lives have people. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. two two birds with one stone, I guess. So with that, guys, uh, cheers, thanks fellas. a lot. Yeah, guys. Yeah. Yeah. I leave, uh, you, I leave you all with one more beer saying, which cuts to the heart of the chase. All right. And that is, do the dogs Whoa. like it? <laughs> That's do right on cue. Do the dogs yeah, right. like it? And so, you got to help you if they don't. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Got it. See you next time.